Good evening, and welcome to the St. Petersburg by Night Podcasting Network. Tonight, we present to you our Hunter the Reckoning Chronicle. What the hell is that? Welcome to another St. Pete by Night revamped production. The following is rated for mature audiences and may contain graphic themes that will be distressing to some viewers. As always, we recommend you ensure the safety and well-being of yourself and those around you at all times. Viewer discretion is advised. We obviously are playing on St. Pete by Night, which is a massive multiplayer TTRPG set in St. Petersburg. Um, you can find us on all socials. We are hashtag St. Pete by Night on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, X, basically everywhere. You can also find us at stpetebynight.com where you can catch up on what's going on on all the different tables. <coughs> um... And also, check out some of the really unique things that we have going on over there, like our one-of-a-kind threat meter. So, tonight, we have these amazing, wonderful players. These are our hunters. They've gone through a few interesting trials as of late. Picked up a job or two, then maybe had they bitten off more than they could chew. They had a visit at the museum that they call their base of operations. That sort of shook them up a little bit. And in short, have spent the last couple of weeks reflecting, thinking, is this really worth the money? Or is now, or now is it about revenge? Where are we at? So, tonight's episode... We are going to start by crossing to Emery and Victor. They are currently in the safe house in the back of the museum, pottering around and slowly upgrading and working on some of the munitions, I believe. Give us a bit of a conversation about where you're at and uh, what you guys might be up to. So Emery and Victor are within the safe house. Uh, we have moved the billiards table over to give ourselves some more space. Uh, Emery is. Yes. You, 
if you guys are gonna move that billiards table, hold on two seconds. I would like you both to give me a strength and athletics check to move the very heavy slate based billiards table. Two successes for memory. One success for Victor. It takes you guys a while, and there's definitely the... But then squeal as you drag it across the floor. You hit the edge of, like, one of the rugs, and it, like, folds up and gets stuck. It's an absolute nightmare. You do manage to move it. It takes you a little bit, though. Now that you've moved the billiards table, what is it exactly that you guys are doing this evening? Uh, so, Emery and Victor will be testing a couple of weapons that they have crafted themselves. Uh-huh. Um, mostly the crossbows and um, some of the vests that they have. Uh, so, Emery is currently wearing a vest. Uh, and she has a couple of her crossbows and stakes. Okay, so all of the stakes, so you mean the, the very intricately carved ones that she's created? In, in between. Okay, because they're very... Some, in, some, not... <laughs> some of those carved ones, you would need to create the notches in the end of them to lock them into the crossbows. That's something that with both of you working together, I'm not even going to make you roll for it. You both have that knowledge. Um... Are you pulling all the, the the sofa cushions up again to make a a target again, or what are we doing here? No. Uh, Emery is just standing by a wall, just standing and having Victor take the weapons. All right, now come on, go ahead and shoot me. I'm ready. I'm okay. sorry. Can I just clarify <laughs> something? You're getting Victor <laughs> to shoot you. With a Kevlar vest with a stake coming from a crossbow. Yep. Why did you get... intelligence her? I'm going to get you to make me an intelligence academics degree because you have a military science degree. And I want you to add your weapon smithing as well, please, Emery, to see <laughs> if it's a smart idea to have a you know, one to two hundred pound draw crossbow, fire a sharpened wooden stake at you, even with a Kevlar vest. <laughs> this is the. Am I going to survive to that roll? <laughs> Do you really need me to roll willpower? Because I got one success. Look, how much common sense do you feel Emery has? I'll re-roll it, because she would know military-wise if it would kill her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can aim uh, on your non-lethal <laughs> organs. <laughs> Kneecap! Three successes. You would know that at such a short range, and the kind of woods that you used, if he even fires remotely as well as he normally does with any kind of weapon, you are going to have a fucking puncture wound full of splinters. I kind of want to still do it. <laughs> <laughs> that one, if he hits one. the wrong spot will cause you significant bodily harm. Can I give the help die and have him do a specific spot that isn't going to hurt me? There is nowhere where having a shaft of wood jammed into <laughs> your body is not going to hurt. That's what she said. Giggity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Fine. If you would like to. You can fashion one that has a padded or blunted end. 
But the stakes you Listen. currently have, no. <laughs> we have to know if that's working. <laughs> that's okay. I wanted to show off Emery's ability to take damage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, pat pat sure. the end of one then. Make it a blunt. Then yeah. Fine. It's not really... It's going to be quick. <laughs> so, are you going to blunt? That's what he said. <laughs> are you going to blunt on one of the stakes? Yes, we'll yep. blunt one of the fucking stakes. We'll blunt one of the stakes. <laughs> okay, that's easy. Don't well, worry, I'm going to to net you. <laughs> yes, that. that has to happen. So, you. Of one of the stakes down. You sort of got a hand one to Victor, and then you go, look at the point, and it's like, mm, maybe not. You sort of got to double think that. I mean, you've been through some shit. You've probably been shot. This might, this might be a little bit different. Maybe we won't do this. So you carve and sort of really blunt the end off. So it's got enough of an angle to still hold direction but not enough that it is piercing anymore. So you hand that to Victor. <laughs> How close range are you going, Victor? Are you going to go to the end of the room to take this shot? Yeah. Or are you going to do it like really close up? How are you doing this? If we want to be fair, I'm going to go on the furthest of her. Yeah. But if she wants, I can be close as well for the second shot. We have to we have to know the the power behind the two crossbows. Yep. Right. And because I, I in think, I think we're thinking in like because we were close to that fucking vampire uh in yeah. both occasions. Um mm -hmm. so maybe like a, a middle distance and then a far uh, and a far distance. Mm -hmm. Check, yeah, because checking the damage. If, if the weapon's not is not working at on on the action, we are fucked. Like, <laughs> so it's finished. The room itself is probably because it, it is a storage room at the back of a museum. It's probably about fifteen meters long, fifteen maybe twenty at the most meters long. So if you go right to the very back of the room and Emery is like up against the armory where the table is, that's going to give you like a good close range understanding, close-ish range, like mid range. So. By all means, um, I'm going to need two rolls from you. Victor, I'm going to need... <laughs> I'm going to need your um, composure firearms, please. Yep. <laughs> yep. And Emery, I'm going to ask you for a composure and resolve check to not duck out of the way. Instinctively. Welcome to Hunter, where staking your friends is fully possible. It will. <laughs> this episode is rated R for what the hell? Uh, seven successes. You stand very firm. You're like, it's only a piece of wood. What's it going to do? Four successes. Four successes. And you are wearing the Kevlar. Now, which one did you purchase? Um, the same one as Emery? No, no. Emery, she... what Kevlar did oh. you purchase? Just to clarify for uh, me, please. Just a, just a standard... Uh, Kevlar. Also, my seven was with a crit as well. I forgot to say that. Yeah. So, you are standing there. Victor, you light up the shot. Now, you're going to go for a gut shot. Because to go for a chest shot, so you got to aim to sort of hit. Because the vests sort of come part, part down the waist. They protect, like, you know, liver, kidneys, heart, lungs, all that sort of stuff. So, you're going to aim to sort of get probably around the diaphragm. You hit Emery, it hurts like a bitch. It still hurts. 
but it does not puncture, but the aim is good and true. You are going to take one superficial damage from this, because you're still being hit with a wooden stake at that velocity. It's a good shot, and you just hear, Ugh! from the end of the room. So what do you think? <laughs> Looking at uh, Emory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I definitely hit, uh, definitely, uh, will work in the situation. Are you gonna take another Fine shot then. or are you gonna leave it at that? Taking another one. <laughs> so you go over, you grab that same blunted wooden stake, because it hasn't yep. pierced through the Kevlar. Are you gonna get closer? Are you gonna stay at the same distance? What are you doing? Um... Can I take another, like, I'm changing crossbow, crossbows to this? Yep. All of them? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm going, like, a bit closer. Yeah. Um, and if she notice anything into the, it's, the impact is going to be really, uh, really the, the whole thing of the crossbow. So I'm going to get a bit, a bit closer. I'm get, you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, big boy. <laughs> Take the shot, Victor. <laughs> so this is now going to be at approximately 10 meter range with a blunted, a blunted bolt stake. Success. Only two successes. Oh, come on, you can use willpower on me, it's fine. I need to know. Are you going to take the two successes or let it lie? I'm going to take the two. Uh... <laughs> okay. At two successes, I need a dexterity athletics check from you, please, Emery. As you notice, Victor's aim is not quite right. It's not a sniper. It's not <laughs> Two successes. You see Victor's not quite right aiming and you just manage to move as sort of like sink your knees and drop a bit. Just enough for the, the stake to just catch the bottom of the Kevlar. You will take another two six two superficial damage right now. But if you hadn't have matched his roll for the shot, that would have been it's kind of getting deadly. As the the bolt you Victor, you see Emery just drop her knees rapidly. Just in time okay? for just in time for what the stake that you just shot to still just hit the Kevlar and you realise you almost shot her straight below the, the armour. Oh. You actually Fuck, almost... I'm like, sorry. You, you actually almost gut shot her. With that then. Eric. Low blow, my dude. Low blow. Sorry. Sorry. I'm... It's crossbows, man. I... <laughs> yeah. Well, we're okay? there. All right. I think yeah, we're good. I'm... I think it's net yeah. time, and then we're done. Let, let, yeah, <laughs> let me up you, okay? <laughs> you are going to be significantly sore. Like, this is... You've got some serious bruising around the diaphragm and sort of the... Yeah. Um, so you pull out the net gun, Victor. Have you got the rope or the chain loaded in it? That's the question. I have the chain. <laughs> but just for... Uh-huh. <laughs> so you have... You pull out the net gun. Now... We, we have to... We have to... We are going to test the net and after we are going to test the chain because Victor is not sure the net gun is going to uh, too much power to actually throw the chain. The thing is, that that's the thing he's concerned about. 
Uh, the chain is going to be really useful against Vampire, but if the net gun is not um, is not packing so too much power to actually uh, get the chain gun to work, it's no use. So can I just... What, what are you shooting at? Are you going to shoot it by the chairs? Uh, so no, no, no. What are, you, what are you shooting it at? <laughs> Emory. Are you seriously shooting this at Emory? Yeah. The thing is to actually capture it, not a fucking... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no. We did discuss this when you created. So for those following along at home in this crash test dummy episode, um, Victor, we, there are net guns that are often used for capture of different things. Victor did some work and created essentially almost like a chain link net for the net gun. Very, it's like light uh, chain. It's the only way you can get it to work. But we're just, he wanted to test the the range on it. Because we did negotiate a reduced range on that net gun because of the weight. I, I'm just going to refer to our handy dandy rule book. Because for, for the, for huh? the first uh, shot, he's going to test like the furthest away from her to see the actual range of it. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe reduce the impact on her if I go full blow on her <laughs> with the chain. <laughs> okay. We have to know if that works. So. And William is not here. <clears throat> so do you clear all the rest of the furniture out of the middle of the room and create a nice... Okay. So you're going to be at one end of the room and Emery's going to, I'm assuming, be towards the other end of the room. Not quite standing as firm as she did. Any other dexterity checks? For the remainder of this scene, because you have taken three superficial damage of bruising to the torso, you will be at a negative one. Just saying. Because that is impacting impacting on your core muscles and your ability to twist and shift out of the way of something. Victor, you take out the net gun. It is definitely slightly heavier, obviously, than it was when it was loaded with a rope. Please... He Make... is expecting to actually not reach her. With, uh, Please with, uh, take your shot. Wait. It's going to be about, gonna... a, about a 12 to 13 metre range by the time sort of where you're standing. Emery's a bit back from the wall. So, please, please take your shot. I hope it's not me misfiring. Please. I'm going to pull that. Please some. keep track of your willpower as you shoot your yeah. soulmate. Three successes. Three? You take the shot. Now, Emery, I'm assuming you're standing firm again. You take the shot, the net flares out, and it just sort of, it says that as the chain comes out, so it comes, comes out, it flops before it gets to Emery's feet. So you can tell that this is definitely going to be, as I said to you, a closer rank because the chain is heavier. Yeah, absolutely. You probably looking at the trajectory of it with your knowledge, both of your knowledge with weapon sniffing, weapons smithing, and being military. You probably have about an eight meter range on this for effectiveness. <laughs> are you going to trust the eight meter range, or are you going to attempt to repack the net in and refire? Because <laughs> uh, he's going to try again, uh, just to, to at the same 
distance just to see if that's actually the same you know or it's not a misfire or something and when you see like the second shot is the same is going to get closer and ask uh emory do you want to test uh, the net or do you want to test the chain we got to make sure it actually captures the thing so yeah let's try it again you sure you're already pretty in a bad condition because of me I've, i'll heal it up later it's fine Okay, here uh -huh. we go. Are you at the same to... distance or are you coming in close? No, I I'm getting in the eight meters of effectiveness. First, I need... I need you to give me an intelligence craft roll to repack the net, please, including your weapon smithing. Oh, thank you. Let's add this to the list of things I never thought I'd do with this cell. You're welcome. We <laughs> we are pretty angry at Frankie. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Four successes. You are more than able to repack the light net in, make sure that everything is sitting correct. You go to take the shot. Give yep. me your roll, please, for that at eight meters so you are definitively closer to emery this time emery i'm gonna get you to give me another composure resolve roll as victor lifts up and fires a essentially a projectile weapon almost towards your face because of the the, the angle he needs to i'm using another willpower just so you're aware yeah just keep track of your willpower please um Yep. Uh, also, um, how many time does he need to actually repack the, the net? Any time you fire it, you will need to put the net back into its its canister. You can't. Yeah, it yeah. yeah, it's like a minute. It's like a yeah, minute like you and take a, a couple minutes to do it. So yeah. Okay. Because yeah, it, but it's not something that you can just go and suck it up like a vacuum cleaner. You it, do need it's to take the time to, to fold yeah. it and put it back together and make sure that it's then going to um, release effectively because otherwise it could get tangled on itself if you rush it, you know. Yeah, okay. So what is your role for firing at Emery? I'm using another repower. Ah, and Emery, what was your composure resolve from? Four successes. Yep. Five successes. <clears throat> Okay, so Emery, you're like, yeah, look, he's only managed to hit me improperly twice. The net gun didn't even reach me last time. I'll be punk! You're thinking you're going to be fine. Next minute, poof. This net comes and wraps around you. It, it hits and it hurts. You are going to take um, another two superficial damage as the metal net wraps around you you feel almost a mini bollard to the back smack you one in the back of the head a couple through the back through your back um as you hit the ground entangled okay marie try to actually get off the the net now yeah sure okay <laughs> i will try and do that Okay. He's actually smiling. Strength, <laughs> and athle that. strength and athletics, please, to get out of the net. And I'm down one die, correct? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure. Two successes? You can't get out of that net. Not at with five with the success of the shot. You are laying there, your bruises are a bit too severe and you're like, oh, you're not getting out. Not without help. Not in a hurry. Yeah. All right, the net is confirmed. We can, get me out. Get me out, please. I'm, I'm okay, okay, okay. Don't, I'm, I'm going to flip her and try to. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think another two. <laughs> <laughs> not, not aggressively. It's like watching a radio. <laughs> so you, after about ten, five to five minutes, you managed to extricate Emery without causing too much more damage from I'm, the neck. I'm, I'm getting the medicine. Is, she looks peed up, man. Um, there's a bit of an egg sort of poking through her hair on the back of her head, where one of the bollards from it. It's like she's showing signs of a minor concussion. Um, I, I, I'm going to get the, the, the first aid kit, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, um, you're not looking so great. I'm going to get you to give me an intelligence medicine check, please, Victor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As Emery, what are you doing after you've been rolled out of the net? I'm probably looking for some ice. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, three successes. Three? Yep. Emery has a minor concussion and has some pretty serious bruising on her abdomen. This maybe wasn't the best idea. Um, mm. It's also at this point in time you hear knocking. Very loud, aggressive knocking on William, uh, on the door to William's office, which as you know is also the entry to your area. I'm going to just look to the camera just to be sure. He's actually at the door. Be right you, back. You see in the on the security cameras one of the museum staff members knocking on the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are not here, right? <laughs> Like it's a, it's a guard or it's a, a staff member like um, who is in the museum like uh... It's one of the actual museum staff members and your security guard is sort of just down the hallway a bit from them <laughs> Okay, we are can I uh, do, we, do we have any means of contacting the the guards or, uh, or, or the in, in the front? Them? I'm going to message it. We are not here. <laughs> Just uh, get get rid of her. <laughs> Please. Give me a manipulation. Oh no. <laughs> um, persuasion roll, please. Can I give oh, uh, Can I give a help day? Sure. Because I need you to understand, because you chose to do this in a museum where you're already still being watched because of what happened recently, two loud explosions, two loud, like, shots just got fired. Net guns aren't quiet. So there is a <laughs> staff member being sent to sort you guys out, find out what's going on, make sure you haven't blown something up. Okay. <laughs> This just keeps getting better and better, you guys. What success? The security guard you see in the camera pull his phone out of his pocket, go. Walks up, shaking his head, he taps the person on the side, taps the, um, the staff member on the side. You don't hear what he says. But you see, he sort of has conversation with him. He's like, I'll speak. It looks like he's sort of gesturing, no, I got this, I got this. And he sort of shoes the staff member back, opens William's office door, shows the staff member that there is no one in there, and closes the door again. And then walks over to the lab door, opens the lab door, shows the staff member there is no one in there, closes the lab door, and locks the door again. The staff member seems sort of placated by this. 
But as they walk away, they're staring over their shoulder, just sort of staring at the guard. William might get an email about this. <laughs> Y'all are gonna get me fired! <laughs> I'm, I'm going back. I'm I'm going back to a marine, try to fix her a bit. Yep. So you spend a <laughs> bit of time. You guys have ice packs in the freezer that's attached to the fridge in the little kitchenette. Like it's simplistic things that you would have, but you definitely sort of patch Emery up a little bit. You 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 are going to have a, a bit of a week of discomfort with those bruises healing. Um nothing that you haven't had before um but on that note we are going to now take a break from these shenanigans and cross to william where we are going to find william in his family home at this point in time probably going through what would have been his father's desk and looking for the address book. You haven't thought about or contacted a lot of these people for a long time. So talk us through where you're at. William tonight, he's realized that he's back in Florida. And while he's got a lot of, he's got, some really some really some friends uh <laughs> he he needs to he needs to sort of reestablish himself with some of the family's old circle because quite honestly we need somebody who can talk on that level very clearly working on the level of just a normal scientist and a couple of vigilantes isn't working mm -hmm. not against frankie we're lucky it worked the first time against um against the uh the vampire that we hunted the first time mm -hmm. we're lucky it worked against la celestina we don't have contacts we don't have people who can keep us under wraps yeah. when things are going on. And William, luckily enough, because of his father's old friends and family and all the family friends that we used to have being relatively wealthy, maybe I can, maybe I can do a little bit of politicking like he did. Yeah. So essentially what you're looking at doing is setting up like a spring garden party, almost. Exactly. Like a spring garden party or a cocktail party, maybe. Yeah. Uh, just a, a little a little get together of old family friends just to announce that he's back in town. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's definitely something that William can do. What I'm going to get you to make is... Pardon me. Um, I'm going to get you to make me a roll, though, to see how you go with making sure you message the right people. Because you were quite young when your father used to throw these parties. Like, you were early teens. So you have memories of different people and who were there, and obviously some of them may not still be around. Some of them might be, some of them might not be. So I'm going to get you, please, to make me an intelligence politics role to ensure, essentially, that you know who to contact to make sure that this you get the most out of this party, so to speak. And I will let you have on that role as well your status with the Arcana. I'm assuming, I'm assuming I wouldn't get any level of desperation. No, not on this. Just wanted to make sure. Of course.
I'm gonna I'm gonna re-roll two dice. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm crit fishing. Not a problem. Go right ahead. I didn't get a crit, but I did get five successes. Okay, with five successes, you're sitting there, and the, as you're going through your father's old address book, the family address book, you have a whole heap of memories sort of flood in. And you remember this person spoke to that person. The more recent Arcanum contacts you've had, you... Oh, that's right, this person knew my father. It's like things start to sort of come together. And you're able to make a lot of really good connections. Um, and realise, like, some people... Oh, that's right, we heard that gentleman passed away. Or, you know, they are getting older, a lot of them. Um, not all of them are going to survive forever, obviously. Um... But you are quite able to get a good list of maybe 30 to 40 people, should you wish to, who would be influential enough to possibly be of help and assistance to you guys. And also just people that you can catch up with. That perhaps you haven't seen them for a while. Maybe you grew up with their kids. You know? It's... And you mentioned that you were going to invite some more personal people to you as well. Yes. He's going, he's not going to invite one of his touchstones because it's kind of a sore spot. <laughs> still not inviting Michael, is... I'm assuming? Still not inviting Michael. Okay. But he is going to invite Jeff. Okay. So you spend the evening going through, would you print them out or would you handwrite them? He's handwriting them. Hmm. Make it more personal. Which, as you would know, is is a touch within the Arcanum that many will appreciate. There are a couple of people that are on that list that aren't necessarily connected with the Arcanum. And there are three that you never quite understood why they were there, but they always seemed that everyone knew who they were. Um, and they often appreciated their input. But the conversations with these three people were very hushed. So, why not play the game? <laughs> so, you spend, this is easily a day's endeavour, handwriting all of these out, making sure that your penmanship is correct and neat and getting them all folded up and addressed properly and sending them off. Um, so these will take about two to five days to reach their destination. What date do you set for this to be? He probably sets it. He needs some time to get everything together. He's not as wealthy as he once was. Um, so he needs a little bit of extra time and he's trying to work on getting his father's business set back set back up as well to get some more money flowing in so mm -hmm. probably two three weeks from now okay um that's something we can finalize later that's not a problem um but no so it's been quite a productive use of your day and it's about towards the end of your day that you look down at your phone. You realise there's a new email. From the museum. For the attention of Dr Barnett. Please inform reasoning of loud noises heard within your private space. Staff are currently feeling rather cautious with due reason, considering your recent endeavours. We are advising you that within the next 24 hours, there will be an inspection of your area and a conversation regarding your attendance at the safety protocol training evening. Signed. Director of staff.
Liam is going to pick up the phone. He's going to dial Emery's number <laughs> because he knows that she must have had something to do with this. I love the fact it's just instantly, oh, this must be Emery. <laughs> and then he puts the phone to his ear, waiting for her to pick up. You've got gains. Miss Gaines, darling. <laughs> ah, Dr. Barnett. How can I help you? I just received a very interesting email from the museum. Hmm? Allegedly, there were loud noises going on. Mm hmm In our private space... Okay. What did you do? And what do oh. I need to explain? Uh, Victor and I were testing out weapons to ensure that we can actually kill creatures. Um, In some things may have been a bit loud, but someone did come by. Staff showed that no one was here, so it clearly wasn't us. In... In... The museum? I'm sorry. Do you want us to start shooting things outside? Go to a shooting range! The weapons that we have are not shooting range applicable. To go out into the woods? I don't know. Not in, a not in the place where we're already under, under suspicion of being a terrorist cell. And when you why? You, you hear Victor's oh, voice come Victor's through. there too. Wonderful. You're you're also in trouble. <laughs> I mean, we've drunk you here. Going, yeah, of course. If you're going, at this point, he's put the phone down and it's on speakerphone because he needs his hands. If you're going to do something like that, you have to tell me first so I can tell people. Something loud is going to happen in the museum so we don't get in trouble again. I am on a razor thin edge of being fired right now. You cannot do this. Hey, did you tell him the net gun is working? Yeah, hey, the net gun is working really well. You're going to be lucky to have a net gun once I'm done with all of this. Oh, you're going to take that thing off my dead fucking body. <laughs> That's intended. Goodbye, Miss Gaines. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that phone call, feeling rather stressed, is William going to head into the office? And or is he going to wait for the next day to head in? Oh. William is going to head into the office because he apparently needs to make certain that this is fixed now. Because not only was there explosions in the office, but they think we run! <laughs> Whatever it was, must be so bad that I've been hiding! So, you jump in your Prius and you drive into the office. We are going to cross to Nick while William is driving frantically, possibly listening to our goodness only knows what to calm himself down on the drive. We're going to cross over to Nick on this day. Now, you have, since the whole situation with Frankie and even before that, started working on your physical fitness. So, starting your day with a run. Yeah, he gets up probably 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, puts on his gym clothes, mm -hmm. uh, pulls his hair back and goes on a run, probably yeah. around the block. Yep. So, after that, you sort of come back, hit the showers. You've got work today at the esoteric shop downtown. So, sort of potty away through the morning. 
Where's he at getting ready for work this morning and getting ready to head in? Probably in the bedroom. That's where all his clothes are. Where's his head at? Where's... Oh, where's I'm sorry. I, I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> he That's okay. is... <laughs> um, he is just thankful that it's quiet. For, for now. Um, he is just enjoying... The, the calm before the inevitable storm that this life tends to have. Um, he is probably making him a coffee yeah. before he leaves for work. Victor and Ella have got him on a coffee kick. He was a big tea drinker before this. Yeah. Hanging um, out with a, someone who's a barista and someone who's a caffeine addict will do that to you after a while. He actually typically has more caffeine than coffee, but that's a different story. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> um, but he he makes a latte. He probably bought himself a latte machine because he's course. bougie. Yeah. Um, so he makes a latte, puts it in a to-go cup, and heads out the door. So you arrive to he's, work. Because, oh, sorry. I was going to describe what he was wearing yes. before we moved on. Yeah. He is wearing... Um, surprisingly very dressy clothes for a job that typically people dress pretty casually for. Yeah. Um, mainly because I imagine at some points he teaches lessons and things like that so he, he looks like a teacher mm. uh, slacks, khaki pants nice button up, he's got his hair pulled back, he trimmed his beard this morning uh, and got his accoutrements and his jewelry on of course um, and he heads out and heads to work. So you arrive to the esoteric shop. It's already open. The owner sort of greets you, gives you a nod. It's like, I'll be out the back today. Uh, you right to handle the front? Yeah, I gotcha. Fantastic. She's. You've been there for long enough now that you've definitely got the lay of the shop well. She's trusting you to manage the place on your own at times. So, so she'll duck out and leave you unattended. So you're definitely becoming like, a trusted employee there now. She knows that you know your worth, you know your crystals, your law, your cards. You, you understand the items in the store more than just your average sort of sales assistant she might hire. So she's more than happy to step step out the back and just let you handle the front. I am going to get you to make me a wits and awareness check for the day, please. Oh, As damn. people come and go during the day. Two successes on two dice. Not bad. So with two successes, it sort of probably gets them a little bit after lunchtime. <clears throat> and now bear in mind, I'm guessing like Nick's day could end anywhere from two to four o'clock, depending on when the owner's sort of like, okay, she off, we're good. Um, so it's a little after lunchtime, so maybe about one o'clock in the afternoon. You hear the door, like the little, the bell sort of ping at the front door. Bags turned, you may be setting up a fresh incense cone on one of the little fountain, the incense fountains just to keep the ambiance yeah. going and keep just sort of the general fragrance of the place and you mm -hmm. hear footsteps sort of come up behind you sort of to the counter just hi I was wondering if I can get some assistance I'm, I'm just looking for some crystals uh do you have anything in mind in particular? As you turn around and look at her, she has about just slightly longer than shoulder length red hair pulled up into a ponytail. A slightly angular, very slim build. And a pair of green eyes look up at you and like, Oh, definitely nothing I've sold you before. As Sarah is looking at you. Sarah is the girl from the warehouse 
who sold you the drugs. Oh no. Oh no. Does she? I'm imagining if Dick recognizes her, she recognizes him. Hence why she looks at you and goes, Oh! Yeah, I'm not selling today, but I'd like some help. Yeah, what can I help you with, Shug? Are you hiding your recognition at all of her? Are you trying to remain calm, or are you... I think with that comment, he would he's intelligent enough to recognize he recognizes her. Mm. So I think he's just gonna just go with it. He sees this as an opportunity to do something that they had talked about doing. So he's going to initiate it. <laughs> she sort of looks at you and goes, well, I heard that um, there's some crystals that can be helpful to protect oneself sometimes. And I heard word that this was a good place to maybe she's got to look at the different crystals and the and jewelry and the display cases and goes could be a good place to get some information yeah I definitely could help you with that how does Sarah look does she look beat up at all she was too You'd see the makeup, like she wears relatively, not thick makeup, but it's good coverage. Um, give me a wits and insight to watch her body language and see if there's any shifting. As she very obviously as well keeps the counter in between you and her. We're going to re-roll some failures. Okay. That's a heavy willpower night, folks. Three successes. With three successes, she appears to move her body very deliberately. Which can be a sign of someone sort of moving around an injury. It has been a couple of weeks since you saw her. And there is a possibility, you would know that when somebody has had like significant facial bruising or whatever, using makeup to cover it is quite normal. As you know, colour correctors these days have an amazing ability to cover bruising if you know what you're doing. So, and she sort of looks at you and she goes, but yeah. The owner's not there at all, right? Out the back. Like, you hear music blaring from out the back. They're probably doing paperwork or, you know, whatever it is they're doing back there. They're definitely not paying attention to the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, protection. Are we looking like... Um, what kind of protection? Are we talking metaphysical protection? Well, you know, uh, some people suggest security systems to stop people from breaking into where you live and work. But I've heard that crystals can be helpful too. Someone suggested something maybe a little bit more of the spiritual element. Sure, I have a couple of things I could recommend, um, depending on your price point with what's available in the shop. I made some big sales recently. So... You know, what have you got in the range of $300? Oh, uh, well, I have a lot of things in the range of $300, and he comes out from behind, because the way I'm imagining this, and correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, um, like, there is a display case full of crystals, but yes. those are, like... Um, the smaller ones, and, yeah. I would say even maybe rarer pieces, so, like, the things that are typically harder to find, am I yeah. incorrect in assuming that? No, that, that's that'd be then, correct. Okay, and then to they stop have like a. From walking off with them, yeah. Right, and then they have. Uh, the stock... Like a section, like a wall. Yeah, yeah. the stock all, stand is sort of like them. all the different tumble crystals, polished pieces, sort of the more, you know, your coin sized pieces that 
people generally buy from a lot of these stores, yes. As you come around the counter, she takes about three or four steps back and maintains staying out of arm's reach of you. In no Don't way you. is she letting you get close enough to her to touch her. Nick has a moment of sincerity across his face when he when she does that. You're just as much a victim as anyone else. And then he walks over to the thing and he picks up a couple of pieces of black tourmaline, mm -hmm. some obsidian, mm -hmm. uh, and then puts them in a little baggie. Mm -hmm. Takes out a probably a card so because these are just loose stones. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then writes down, like, what they are, what specific kind of protection they can be used mm -hmm. for. Um, he puts a couple of pieces of, uh, decently sized, uh, uh, quartz in the bag, because quartz is, quartz is typically used for, like, amplification of mm -hmm. whatever you're doing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he brings it back to her. Just several different pieces of obsidian of various different sizes and black tourmaline and quartz. While you're doing this, she's just standing there sort of watching you. There's probably like a jewelry display there as well. She's sort of having a look through and she's watching you relatively closely and watching you take your time to pick out the pieces. Um paying attention to your the deliberate actions of Nicholas in this moment and seeing the care that he puts into this and she just sort of very she's just watching him and she sort of looks at you and just goes sometimes people who are victims or appear to be have chosen a life for a reason Sure. That doesn't mean you deserve. The, that means. That doesn't mean you don't deserve better. That's all I'm saying. You don't know what I deserve. I think you are deserving of not trying to potentially skirt around an injury every time I see you. We're dealing with that big brute. And he's kind of whispering across the store at this point, and kind of. He respects her space. He's making this as non-confrontational as possible, but they are in public. He mm. doesn't want to make a scene and doesn't want to put his private life in display and yeah. that kind of thing. So he keeps that, but he is whispering to her. And the whole time he comports himself in such a way that he is not coming off threatening. He genuinely wants to help her get out of this fucking awful situation she ended up in. Just because people think you deserve it doesn't mean it's that easy. What? Walking away? <laughs> I can do that. Anyway, you're saying about the crystals? So I've got a couple of pieces of black tourmaline, um, some obsidian, and a couple of pieces of quartz. The obsidian and black tourmaline are... Tourmaline, you could use it for a couple of different things, but the ob uh, or, excuse me, the obsidian, mm -hmm. you can use it for a couple of different things, um, protection being one of them. Isn't that like that dragon glass I was talking about in uh, in Game of Thrones? Obsidian? Or is that different? Yeah. It's kind of cool. I'm going to be honest, I don't really watch a lot of pop culture things, so. Alright. It's been a while since I've read the books. Never read the books, but the show was kind of cool. 
I'm a big fan of dragons. But, um, that's about it. Um, the quartz is an ampl stone of amplification. Um, so, if you want, I can wire wrap some of this into a necklace for you. No, I'm good. I don't intend to keep wire or sharp things on me if I can help it. That's fair. Make me a wits and awareness check, please. As she put some cash down on the counter to pay for them. We are spending another point of willpower. Okay. Also, I probably should have asked this. Does Nick get any desperation off of this? I... You can have a, a desperation on this one. Uh, Hold on. Okay. So if you would like to, now bearing in mind the cell is currently, I'll put you a desperate, you can roll one or two desperation dice for this, up to you. Wow, it just really doesn't want Nicholas to be good at awareness. Mm -hmm. So I already spent power, so I'm going to say for the re-roll, we'll just use that as the say mm -hmm. that same willpower is already spent. Okay, two successes. Not a one nor a ten on any of the desperation die. Wonderful, that was going to be my next question. Um, with two successes... As she pushes the money across the counter and reaches out for the bag of crystals, she gives you a nod. You can see the cash she's pushed across would cover these crystals, no problems. Because she's literally pushed across $300. Which, if you remember, was the amount of money she charged you for the drugs. Damn. Damn. So she pushes that across the counter, grabs a bag, gives you a nod and goes, you never know, maybe I won't see you around sometime. And leaves. As you pick up the cash, however, are you going to put the payment for it in the till? And He is up? checking that stack of bills. You go through the bills, and in between, in the center of all of the cash, is a slip of paper. Well, what does it say? <laughs> has a phone number on it. And just has, if times get desperate, for a good time, not a long time. Damn it, I don't know why that's about to make me fucking cry. I need a minute. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, take a moment. It's okay. It's okay. So, after that interaction and that message from Sarah, you finish out your shift, probably with a lot of thoughts going through your head. Probably about three o'clock, the boss is going to go, the owner will come out and go, hey, thanks for the day. Uh, we, we should be good for now. I'll close up tonight. It's pretty quiet. All right. Uh, no problem. And he does his last 
kind of thing, so to speak, that he would be like end of shift things, tidying yeah. up, straightening up, and then he'll clock out and leave. Do you think he would head straight to the safe house? No, I think he would go change. Yeah. So by the time and, he's sort of go get changed. And use this time to think about how he's going to tell this to the cell that he might be able to rip Sarah away from that so we have someone on the inside. Mm -hmm. So while you take this time to sort of go and change, get changed into some more comfortable afternoon clothes, because you never know what what your new friends are going to get up to. And as Nick starts to make his way back to the museum, this is where we're going to take a break. And we'll come back in a couple of minutes to reconvene with the cell at the museum. Um, and we'll go from there. So everyone go get a drink, get a snack, take a couple of minutes to yourself, and we'll see you back here shortly. St. Petersburg by Night is brought to you through collaborations with our partnered vendors, Wolfpack Dice, Ember Fox Dice, Dragon Ink Dice, Bear of the Bard, Champs Tramps, Penshi Artista, and Chromatic Creations. Links to our partnered vendors, as well as our Twitch and YouTube channels, can be found on our website, stpetebynight.com. The official theme song for St. Petersburg by Night is Vampire by Faith and Failure. You could find them at faithandfailure.com. You can follow St. Pete by Night on all socials with the hashtag St. Pete by Night. If you wish to support our program, you can do so at coffee.com slash St. Pete by Night to help keep the stories rolling. were able to get a drink, grab a snack, bio break if needed. We are going to dive straight back on in to the strange roller coaster that has been this uh, this evening's episode so far. Nick's just finished work, he's gone home to get changed, and then he's going to be heading to the safe house. We are going to cross to the safe house where Victor has patched Emery up a little bit. She's kicking back on the couch, eyes back on the back of the head, probably wrapped her ribs up because there's a possibility maybe one's got a little bit of a fracture or a float happening there. So you two are chilling out in the safe house. The billiards table and everything, all the furniture's probably still pushed back because I don't think that's a priority right now. So where would you both be? I mean, Emery's probably sitting on one of the sofas. Where would Victor be at the moment, do you think? Victor would be on the side, just uh, looking at Emery, so she's not moving too much. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, to actually uh, make amends, he's actually uh, um, uh, cleaning all of the weapons of Emery uh, and making sure everything is not going mixed fire and stuff like that. Putting the bullets in the small cases and stuff like that. <laughs> so... While this, you're sort of sitting back, Emery, like maybe scrolling on your phone or something. While Victor is under your watchful eye, cleaning and doing, like just fixing all of your weapons up. The the nine mil you usually carry, everything's all being clean, and like Victor's work is primo. You know this shit, so it's like absolutely amazing. It's at about this time, probably about four o'clock in the afternoon. William, you, in your slightly angry state, after getting the email and the phone call with Emery, arrive at the museum. As you enter and head, like head in, head into the museum itself, and you sort of navigate through the hallway. You come up to near the front, like sort of near the hallway where your your entrance, your your office is, and one of your guards just sort of goes, "Ah, Doctor Barnett." 
Ah, yes, Gary, how are you doing? I'm, I'm okay. Um, it's, um, George, but okay. Um, I just thought I'd let you know there were some staff members knocking on your office. Uh, we heard a noise and didn't know what was going on. I, I knew you weren't there and I wasn't 100% sure about the others. They hadn't arrived since my ship started. Um, but I did lock your office and the lab doors. I, I, I apologise, I don't know if that was a smart idea. I, I sort of didn't want to lock the, the, the... And he's sort of almost whispering, he's like, I didn't want to lock the, the museum staff out, but it seemed like the right thing to do. Do you need key, do you need do you need a set of the keys? I, I can't remember if you have. No, I have I have a set of keys. Okay. Thank you. You did the right thing. You are. You're doing a good job. You're thank doing you. a good sort of, job. Sort of breathes like he's like, uh, thank you. I, I I can't afford to lose this job. I, I, thank Don't you, worry. Doctor Barnett. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. I, in fact, I'm gonna give you a a, a dollar raise. Thank, thank you, thank you, Doctor. Uh, it's appreciated. I'll, I'll yeah, that, that, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, I, I have to get back to work now, but thank, thank you. Yeah, you, you, you go get back to work. Okay. I have, I have some people I need to go talk to. I have a couple phone calls I need to make uh, about whatever was going on here. Of course, of course. <laughs> Enjoy your afternoon. And he sort of turns around and goes back to sort of generally keeping an eye on the place. Um, and your office door is indeed locked. So he's done his job, at least. You unlock your door, you can walk into your office. What are you going to, are you going to take a moment or are you going to walk straight in? He can assume Emery and Victor are back. He's going to take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. Mm -hmm. He's going to say to himself, what would Robert do? Mm -hmm. And then he says, no, I can't shoot them. Uh, <laughs> they'll win. He breathes in again. He breathes out. Mm -hmm. And he says, I need to be diplomatic about this. Let's go. And so he, he finally opens, opens the door to the safe house. Emery, Victor. So you walk into Emery on the couch, kick back, ice pack on the back of the head. Victor's methodically going through and cleaning all the weaponry. And uh, all of the furniture help. is pushed away from the center of the room, and there's just a straight line through the center of the room. I don't know Dr. whether Barnett. Victor's picked up the neck gun and repacked it or not. He's actually uh, on the on the corner, uh, just um, in 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 plain sight. He's going to Doctor Barnett. I got some good news. Oh, we good. have a net gun who actually functions, so, and I actually uh, crafted, so we can actually drag the chain gun into the panic room if we have to get a, a living specimen uh, for the, you know, the job. Uh, obviously, I don't know if uh, it's going to hold if uh, we some supernatural and stuff, but Emery cannot get out of it, so she's pretty good. She's fine. Uh, she's a bit hurt, uh, but you look at her. She's fine, so the specimen could be fine. Well, that's very good to hear, Victor. Thank you so, now so much for telling me. 
it's fine. And now we have a prototype we, uh, where we can actually multiply the net guns to get each one, uh, each one one basically. Just be, be minded. It's very difficult to actually fold again, so you have one chance to actually restrain a supernatural with that. Wait. Wait, wait a second. Are you are you saying that you tested? Hold on, I'm just processing this right now. Emery, why are you injured? <laughs> um, I had uh, multiple stakes and then was captured by a net gun. <laughs> it's at about this moment that Nick would probably walk in, should he choose to. He is um changed into. Like a pair of boots, a kilt, something comfortable, um, and just a sleeveless shirt because it's starting to warm up in Florida, tucked mm -hmm. into the kilt. He looks very dapper. He's pulled his hair back. He looks at Emery. What the fuck, Emery? What happened to you? Uh, Victor did some really good work. Victor, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um, actually, we... I didn't know if the weapons actually work. So we have to have a test, a real test. Yep. Where did you Just test to... them at? Here. Yeah. That's what I was about to get to, good Nicholas. Mm, I'll let you have it. Not only did you test them on each other, putting you in an unfit state to fight should we be attacked once again in our own home. But instead of testing it on a dummy, a pillow, a chair, you shot each other with live yeah. weaponry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Emory and saying, yeah, and what? Yeah, this is normal. We need to she test it to ensure much. that at least a human figure would have significant issue. And if someone is actually capable of getting out of the net with the, with the physique of Emery, it, it's no use. It's not going to be used uh, to, uh, against Frankie. As, as... As a man of science, I can tell you there are many different ways you could have tested it on a human-esque subject without needing to actually shoot yourself. And you could have done it in a safer area, or at least done it in the panic room, where the sound might have been, you know, muffled, but instead you did it here! Uh, in, in this the, room! In the panic room, is actually, it could be very dangerous, uh, shooting, like, in really in close space. Yeah, Second yeah. thing... Yeah, like it could have been, really, da thing, been really we, dangerous in here! At close range! Thing, with the wooden stakes! It's... She's fine. Yeah. You were both Your definition you were both of... The military. You were both in the military. And you should know, was... never fire a weapon at a human being unless you intend to kill. Yes, that's what they tell us. Yeah. Well, we know who the himbos are. <laughs> I have a question. Do either of you actually show William or Nicholas that you blunted the end of the stake? Or are you just no. going to let them... You just gotta keep them, let them have the, the idea that you were shot with a literal stake. He's, he's not actually uh, hiding anything, but everything is on the counter right now. Yeah. Uh, so... yeah. If they want to look at it, they can, but Emery's letting them decide if <laughs> Emery actually took two fucking stakes. Uh -huh. And I have a basic on medicine, so she's fine. I actually yeah. patched her a little bit. Do you remember? what I said when I first got here. You were on vacation. Yeah. 
Okay, do you remember what I said about how I ended up finding you guys? Because, because we're loud. That was my fault, Emery. Because you hear me shot my sniper rifle? No, it was I saw Emery and William in a dick waving contest with an arm. Oh, yeah. And then I proceeded <laughs> to say, discretion is something we need to work on. Mm -hmm. That is very much applicable in this moment, Miss Gaines and Victor. Well, I Just mean, we're saying. working on that. We have silencers now. Nick is going to go back into William's office. He's just... Uh -oh. Clearly, Nick. she is in too much of a state to understand the words coming out of Nick's mouth. Okay. So before he says something really mean to uh, Emery, he's just walked off and back towards the office. William, uh -oh. I need to talk to you whenever you're uh -oh. done scolding the children. <laughs> you don't want to see the... Okay. So... I'm very proud of it. Look. You should be very proud of your work. Love, you should be very proud of your work. However, you need to learn that there is that there are different ways you can test things without needing to work on each other because it is a very lucky even if he's going to see the state the stake was blunted. Mm -hmm. That is not an appropriate safety precaution. That is not an appropriate safety precaution. Um, you were still shooting a wooden yeah. implement at somebody at a high rate of speed. I'm just taking all the precaution to actually get ensure no one is actually hurt into the squad when we are on the raid, especially with, uh, with an individual who can punch through a wall, sir. The precaution that you should take should be dealing with tests in an appropriate fashion. Next time, if you we need help coming up with a test, next time if you need help coming up with a test or an area two test where it will be safe and secure and you won't disturb visitors in the museum, come it, speak with me first, and uh, I will and I will create. I agree. I agree about that. It was not our intention to do that, but we have to lay low right now. And the thing is, we don't have much place to actually hide from everybody else. Then come to my estate. I'll set up a range at my estate and we can test things there. Nick. Your estate? You are back in William's office. There is a knock on his office door. Is there like a peephole? No. Nick has got his visitor badge on him, or his badge. Uh, he's gonna run in the safe house and grab William and be like, somebody's not gonna come on. So as you, you've just mentioned your estate, Nick comes in and grabs you and like, wait, there's someone knocking on the door. All right, all right, all right, all right. You, Nicholas, you, back, back in the same house. Can't we just say we were having a meeting? Fine, whatever. So you shut the door? Hello. So you, you shut the, 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 the um, storage door? Yeah, shut the storage door, shut the, the outside, like, because it's in, like, a closet, right? So he yeah. shuts the closet door as well. You see, standing in front of you, with sort of sandy, light brown hair pulled to a ponytail at the nape of the neck, very professional looking, the five foot nine, slim build, but still with the piercing brown eyes that just always seem to stare into your soul, Dr. Emily Collins. The museum director. Dr. Collins! How wonderful to see you. Come, come, sit. 
Dr. Barnett, how kind of you to decide to attend this evening. And she walks in, looks at Nick and gives him a nod. They would have seen each other occasionally. She gives a nod. Forgive me if I don't sit. I'm assuming you received my email. I did receive your email, and there is a perfectly wonderful explanation for what was going on. I don't I want to hear it. And I don't want it to happen again. All of already this, seen to it. All of the staff are already on edge at the moment. After the <clears throat> gas leak, and then so many parents heard of the fictitious terrorist attack. All of our staff are currently very on edge. I'm sure you can understand. Yes, I can. And she's going to look at Nick and look back at William. <clears throat> I understand that you and your friends, associates, have some method of influence over quite a few of our benefactors here at the museum. Which is why I tolerate your continued presence here. But I do need you to bear in mind that this is a place of learning and of discovery, not of violence. I agree. Which is why I've had a very firm talk with them. And which is also why you'll be attending the next week's worth of evening safety briefings? Yes. I had already planned on it. They're three hours each weekday evening starting tomorrow night. I understand this may be tedious for you, Dr. Barnett. Considering your experience. But if this is what allows for your continued presence and to put some of the other staff and the other sort of directors' minds at ease, it might be worth making sure that you're there. I agree wholeheartedly. My personal apologies from my friends in discretion. As I said, I've had a firm talk with them, and I'm going to continue to remind them of the way in which they breach the ethics of this community. I am incredibly sorry for everything that has happened. Some of it is granted. But I will endeavor to do better in the future, and I will come and I will come to every single safety brief, briefing this week. And if it is required, I will do so even further. Is he going to turn up to every single one this week? Yes. In future, maybe not. But charisma, every single one. Charisma persuasion. Do I get any bonuses from my Arcanum contacts or anything of the like? I will let you take one additional dice for that. Okay. I'll split the difference with you on it. As she looks at you... With heavy I'm spending scrutiny. a willpower to re-roll. She looks at you with heavy scrutiny. Three successes. With three successes, she seems to listen to your words. 
she looks at you. I'll take that at the value in which, in which it is worth, Dr. Barnett. I'm curious, what research are you actually doing back here? I would take you into the bio lab to show you, but I am currently not allowed into the laboratory. Uh, effectively, do you know the organization of which I am a part of? I'm aware that we have benefactors that often donate artifacts and finances to the museum. I wasn't aware they were part of an organization. I was simply thought there were several individuals who worked together. Oh, well, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a fraternity, as it were. Um, We're not in the movies, Dr. Barnett. And this is not the movies. It's just an association of scholars. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Greek life. But, effectively, what I am doing is a bit of a mixture of modern archaeology work on top of, um, a bit of biological testing. Uh, I am a physicist, not a biologist. However, because of the field that I am in and the fraternity I am in, I'm often granted specific fields of research. Uh, if you would allow me um, into the laboratory, I can show you some of the subjects that I've gathered. I don't have time for that this evening. Oh, well, Apologies. all right. Uh, I will let you know I've uh, done a bit of research on some dating, some carbon dating of some recent uh, uh, structures here in the here in the city. Uh, that has been quite fun. Um, I've been doing a bit of uh, local local history work, uh, de detailing some archaeological evidence with some of the earliest findings of Native American culture here in here in the state. It's quite. What lovely. is the intent for your little? Your, your little spiel you're reeling off right now. So right now, this is this is partially a lecture, partially yeah. misdirection, because technically everything he's saying is true uh -huh. in a certain point of view, but it's basically to put her mind at ease of like, I am doing something. I'm legitimately doing some, some research, but... Her eyes almost glaze over slightly as you continue to sort of like... Ramble on, ramble on, ramble on. And she goes, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And, and she's going to turn to Nicholas a bit. And what exactly is it that you are assisting with? I'm a folklorist. Right. He offers it me a folk... A, it is... Uh, folklore tends to be an intrinsic part of cultural development. Um, especially when you start looking into centuries prior to our own. I'm very aware of that. He is my anthropological counsel. Very well. Well, as much as I don't always necessarily agree with methods of research that you seem to employ, Dr. Barnett, as long as you can prevent any more loud disturbances, this is not a fraternity house. This is a museum. It should be treated with the respect and reverence that it deserves. I agree. On that note, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening at the first safety briefing. Otherwise, enjoy the remainder of your evening and afternoon. You as well. She Good will... evening, Dr. Emily. Good evening, Dr. Barnett. And she looks at Nicholas. You can call me Nick. I'm not a fan of titles. Very well then, Nick. Enjoy your afternoon. And she, she Dr. Emily. leaves with a bit of a suspicious glance over her shoulder at the pair of you. And the poor security guard just sort of mouths, sorry, <laughs> over as she walks. Oh, sorry. Couldn't stop her. <laughs> so, she leaves. <laughs> Let's 
So Emery and Victor, if you want to have been able to have heard any of that, wits and awareness from you. Three successes. Three? Yep. And you, Emery? Zero. Your head's way too sore still, Emery. It's like still just thunk, 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 thunk. That pounding of a headache that you get before any kind of painkiller set in. You would have heard a fair bit of this, Victor. Um, and gained a, a bit of an understanding that they covered your asses, basically. So... Do you two go back in and talk to the others, or are you going to remain in the office briefly? Well, Nick wanted to talk to William privately first for a minute. Mm -hmm. So he would ask Nick, or he would ask William, uh, Hey, uh, William, can we have a quick conversation? Sure. I guess. Should I be are scared? You okay. No! Why would you be scared of me? Don't answer that. I don't want to know the answer to that. Never mind. However, you would not believe who I saw at work, at work today. And I feel like, compared to the other two, you were somewhat the most calm, aside from myself. <laughs> Since Tweedledee and Tweedledum wanted to go doing God knows what with God knows what and God knows where. Nicholas, I don't want to know about any affairs you're having or um, lover you made at work. Um, I don't need to know. Uh, no, actually. Um, I'm asexual, my dude. I don't really... No, no. No. Nah. Okay. Anyway. Then what's going Sarah on? Sarah showed up at work. Sarah? Sarah showed up at work. Sarah, 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 drug runner Sarah? Sarah the, the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was I wrong? You into... Are you also not a calm one? You need to go into hiding. Soon. Like, no, immediately. I think it'll... You're being watched. I... I... No, you I do think... not understand. You're being watched. You need to go into hiding. They already know you're coming. They already know that we're here. So it's likely where they got you, where they started following you from. Then they followed you back to your, they followed you back to your job. They're watching you. As well as watching the rest of us, they've watched Emily, and em uh, they've watched Emery, they've watched Ella. They got a hold of their location. They've got the location of your work. They're gathering intel. You're good with computers, mm -hmm. right? Decently. And he takes out the slip of paper and hands it to him with the phone number. Shows him what it says. Maybe trace this back. Uh, yeah. uh, For a note to the storyteller, Nick has already put the number in his phone before he, when he was on his way over, and then okay. hands that to William. Mm -hmm. Right. Did she, so she gave you this with a bunch of money that I'm 99% sure was the exact same money I gave her. There's, there's a good chance, that's, yeah. That's a threat. She seemed like she wanted out. I don't think she wanted out, darling. I don't think she wanted out. That's not what she was doing. 
that was evidence that she handed me over. I mean, that's why I'm giving it to you, Mr. Computer Wizard. Work your magic, man. I've been seeing that guy you've been doing yoga with. Mr. McGavin? He's lovely, isn't he? She smells of pot. But other than that, I don't have any judgment one way or the other because I don't know the guy. And Axe body spray. Oh. Tell him to lay off the axe. The cannabis is a much better smell. No. Uh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Also, um, just so we are on the same page, the next time we're going to send somebody to confront Supernaturals, I probably should be one of the ones to go with whoever else. I'm just throwing that out there. I get it. We all kind of pan you, you panicked. We all panicked it for a minute there. But like, maybe next time let me go. That's all. I, I will keep that under, advise, under advisement, Mr. Flynn. Believe Please me. Please call me Nick. Mr. Flynn's my father. I will keep that under advisement, Mr. Flynn. Believe me. It was a mistake. I will not be asking Miss Gaines to do something like that again. Fair enough. But I will take it under advisement. Speaking of Miss Gaines, Emery, you know from experience that if you want to go and catch a bargain at the flea market you are thinking of going to, Now's about a good time to head on in. It's one of the times you know within the next hour or two you should be able to catch Granny at without too many customers to annoy you. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'll start getting up from the couch and just be like, <laughs> using the couch to get up. Uh, making my way over. Go slow, go slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, probably using Victor wherever I could to just like pull myself. Um, he's like, all right, we gotta, we gotta start making our way. If we're gonna go, go see that flea market, get the stuff we need to get. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, I was thinking something. Maybe it's dumb. Okay. Mm hmm. You remember the time we were into, you know, the operation with John, with sorry, with Nick. <laughs> Uh, going in the building, everything. Um, it was hurt, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if I get that correctly, um, Frankie is some kind of a vampire, right? I don't know, honestly. I, he's definitely a supernatural of some form. I, he, I, There was a weird fog that came across and then the guard started acting weird. Then when I touched yeah. him, I just I couldn't breathe anymore. So something I, weird is going on with that. That's not a normal thing. I mean, I was looking at the files, you know, of, uh, of William and he called them hemophagic entities or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was weird. You know that. It's, with uh with Nick being all bloodied out, I you know, I don't know, we could do some don't do you think it makes him more stronger or something like that when he bleed out? Or I don't know. So you guys talk about this as you're sort of walking into William's office and about to walk past. So you two are having this conversation next minute. Emery and Victor start walking through talking about hemophagic entities and heading seemingly out for the door. Where are you two I... going? Shopping. You want to come? Sure. I could use out of this building already. Already stressed. Also, can we all ride together? I need to share something with y'all. Oh, sure. Okay, sure. I called a friend of mine uh, who I used to work with or for, um, and I have some information I need to share. 
So That's... you don't need to know who you're sleeping with. I'm asexual, yeah. god damn it. I don't really <laughs> care to sleep with anybody. As you guys are walking out through the museum, whose car are you going to take? The Prius? Yeah, let's take the Prius. So William hop in. Yeah, let's go. You guys all hop in. You've probably got about a 10 to 15 minute drive because Emery will give you the address. It's about a 15 minute drive from the museum, pending traffic. So, Emery, do you take the front seat or the back seat? I'm going to take the back seat, and if I can lay down, I don't even care if I'm like laying in someone's lap. I'll, I'll, you know. <laughs> so whoever's in the back with Emery, like it's kick back, the legs are up and over the over the top of you, seatbelts barely on, you know. It's my fault, yeah. so I'm 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 getting in the back. I don't care. Break check. <laughs> 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 so, while you're driving, Nick. Um, so, I called um, my contact that I have, who's been kind of doing this for a while. Told him what was going on. Um, definitely maybe thinks it is a vampire. Um, I need to call him back and see if he was able to find any other information for me. Um, but that book that we're after, that binder, might be an alchemical grimoire. Because apparently, with the description that I gave, they can do weird shit with blood and their blood, and I am probably going to be so fucked up. What do you mean? Uh, wait, wait, wait. What, what do you mean by that? When the dumbass punched me in the nose, I threw a napkin away. A pile with, of napkins. Yeah, a pile of napkins away. With my blood on it. And if they are an alchemist who can use blood to do weird shit... Eh, it was nice knowing you guys. Nah, I can't. So... Hopefully it's not that bad. But I he's looking, he's looking with right eyes to Emery. I was right. <laughs> Looks like you oh. were right. Congratulations! No and I'll like pat him on the chest as I'm there. Like, uh, yeah, congratulations! I'm proud of you, Victor. You've been taking your lessons to heart. Are you okay? Well, yeah. He hadn't done anything with it yet, apparently. Yeah, we have to. Uh, can we do a magic thing to to uh, get your blood back? What? We? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. Sorry to actually make the laugh of a fucking car. Yes. <laughs> we can't do magic. All right, magic. Magic doesn't exist. It's just science we don't understand. Okay. Whatever it's, magic. You... it's fucking magic, but... William. Do you really want to make the driver of this car angry right now? Yes. This this is a priest. If I get into a car accident, we're all we're all dead. Emery especially. I'll survive out of <laughs> all of you. I don't know. I don't know. You make me wonder sometimes, Em. Um, okay. That's bad okay. news. Um, here's the thing. Mm hmm Also, uh, I got Sarah's phone number. The girl who actually not... sold us? She showed up to my job and gave me her number when she paid for her things. She followed she you? She got a new job. I'll be fine. Okay. That's bad. We're not, we're not certain it's her phone number yet. I haven't been able to trace it. We're not calling it until I'm yeah. able to determine if it's actually her. Okay. Okay. 
What did your contact say about that? I mean, we kind of already know the answer to that. That's one of his lackeys. It's just... I mean, I, I don't know how else to say that. It, yeah. There's nothing There's nothing we can do. It's probably some sort of scheme that they're, that they're brewing. So... I'm still working out exactly what they're... What, what she's doing. I don't trust this. It seems too convenient. We already talked about the idea of trying to turn Sarah into a double agent, and then she just offers herself up on a platter. It's too coincidental. They're, they have already worked through that worked through that possibility, and they're likely trying to use our goodwill against us. So, well. okay, so we've had Frankie show up to our place. Then we have Sarah... Was it Sarah Sally? I can't remember. Sarah. 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 Sarah is my... She's dead anyways. Uh, Sarah, um... Coming to your place of work. That head injury is really so, getting to Emory. Yeah. That, so they're coming to workplace scenarios. So, Victor, I'd be on the lookout for any one of those others. I've been, I, I've been doing the, you know, the basic shit, laying low, not showing my face yeah. too much around here. They don't so have my blood. They've seen our face. They know uh, mm -hmm. generalized information. It's public knowledge to know where you work. Probably scouting that out. Chances are they're probably doing some form of scare tactic, showing that they know where we are, who we are, yeah. what we're doing at most times. That's so actually... May I offer a suggestion? Yeah, of course. Use me as the bait. What the hell? What's the worst that could happen? I've already We're got not... it all over. Nick, not... the last time you broke your Explain nose... Explain the bait. Explain it. Simple. If this is a trap, we can set it on our own terms. And we'll have the advantage. I'm not going anywhere by myself with that fucker. Eat any of them. We can set up something where all of you can hide. And if Frankie shows up and tries to do some of that ooh woo bullshit, we can get him. I think it's our best bet, personally. Because taking him to home court advantage on his turf is bad. We're at a public museum. That's not a good idea to try to lure him back into the museum. So if Sally is, or Sarah, uh, is uh, giving me her number, hoping I will take the bait, let's give them what they want, and we spring a trap. That is the okay. most okay. logical way forward. I, think. I get what you're saying. The only thing we don't know is how to contain. If someone something happened, is it contain the information because we don't know where we're going to be bring on basically. It could be I have seen some people just watching. We we, we don't know anything about the terrain. We need we need time to prepare anyways. I'm working on something that could help us. We're almost we're almost the flea market. I was about to say yeah. at that point. You actually make the turn and the car park's pretty well, it's, it's emptying because it is the end of the day. There's still, a, you know, probably easy like 30 to 50 cars there. This is quite a large flea market in Bradenton, sort of the north. It's, it's well known. It's a bit of a local establishment. Amory knows her way around the place quite well. And for Victor and William, this is where you guys met Granny. So what's the plans as you pull in? What are we doing? Shopping. Yeah, uh, Victor and Emery are definitely going shopping for the 
items we described, uh, yep. essentially uh, breathers and gloves. So you're after a respirator, PPE, <laughs> just sort of that sort of stuff. So you can locate that at any craft store. So basically anything from what you described, things that you would use to work with resin would work well. So that is definitely a possibility. Um, um, so as Victor and Emery walk in, you guys have been around the, the flea market quite a few times. You spent a lot of time there at the end of last year when you guys helped out with the poltergeist situation that was occurring at Granny's store. So you guys can very easily find those craft, that craft store. Buy the PPE. It's not a big issue. It's quite easy to do. Nick and William, what are you doing? Nick is going to go look for books because he knows, like, not only does he collect rare occult tomes and things like that, has a little collection, he just likes old books in general. He thinks there's something charming about them. Wits investigation, then, please. Nick? William, are you going with Nick or are you going to do something else? William's actually going to do a little bit of talking with the shopkeepers at, at various shops. He's not really, he's hes window shopping, yeah. but he's basically looking for asking people about things that are, that have been going on that are a little out of the ordinary, you know, doing a little bit of investigation work into the, into if things have been normal around here or if they've been, or if some things have been going weird in the area. Um... I will get you to make me a charisma persuasion roll. Can I make an argument for charisma and insight? Because I'm looking into, I'm trying to convince people to tell me things and I'm reading into their responses. Yes, you can make an argument for that. Make that roll and hold that thought because I'm going to touch base with Nick first. Two. Two. With two successes, you sort of walk around. You do find a couple of bookstores. Um, pretty average secondhand sort of bookstores. Like pr uh, walking through, perusing what they've got. There's the stereotypical. There's lots of leftover Fifty Shades of Grey that people have donated to get rid of. Um, anyone who's been to any kind of thrift store or secondhand bookstore in the last four years will have seen an inordinate amount of those. Um, there's a lot of romance novels. There's a few what appears to be, to your eyes, more juvenile looks at folklore and spirituality. Sort of the how to choose a crystal for your day sort of stuff. There's the a beginner. Couple, very beginner stuff. There's a couple of older books that maybe were grim fairy tale books that sort of had the older bindings on them. So less detail work on the covers and they're more maybe 50 year old, 70 year old books. Um, there's not really a lot per se. Um, so yeah, it's really up to you whether or not you have purchased any of those. But there's none that Thank really you. would pique the interest of the collection that you generally keep. I think depending on who did the translation, because that's also a thing with uh, grim fairy tale uh, mm -hmm. books that are antiquated. It's not necessarily how old it is. It's how, uh, also, who was the author who translated the stories, because that also carries a significant weight with book collectors. It would appear that these ones have been, they're not the best, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. They're definitely not accurate to the old stories. They're more almost Disney-fied. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. He wouldn't buy anything. William, what did you get on that roll? Four successes. Okay, four successes. You sort of ponder through and a couple of shopkeepers, you know, because you've been there before. You were there a few times helping out with the whole granny situation. Um... A couple of people sort of give you a sideways glance, like they kind of recognise you. Um, one particular individual sort of, yeah, hasn't really been any more weird stuff happened since uh, 
Granny seemed to find that new medication and come to her senses, you know. Always thought she was a bit daft, a lot of people like to call her the local witch. But, um, it's been nice and quiet around here. No more, oh my God, the amount of ghost hunters we had at one point. It's ridiculous. Just people believing in the supernatural. You know, there's often more to the world than meets the eye, but I agree. Ghost hunters are often ridiculous. All right, it's... I mean, seriously, who throws a shoe? What kind of ghost is that? That guy must have been, like, off his rocker to think that a ghost threw a shoe at him. Whatever. Whatever. Yep. There was somebody who was off the rock there. Who was this individual who threw, who threw the shoe? This was a while ago. Some guy said that Granny threw a shoe at him. Cause, and then, then tried to say it was a ghost and not Granny. Like, pfft. This was, but yeah, this is before, you know, she got both the new medication and she sort of got a bit of her senses back. So, it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have a name of this man, would you? No, he just spoke to the paper and we all laughed at him. Oh, all right. William, you would remember that back when you guys came to investigate the poltergeist situation? There was one person who had made a police report that a shoe had been thrown at him by Granny. Because he had an argument with her over the price of something. It was a cowboy boot. And if you recall, uh, yeah. there was the individual back then who was looked like they might have been, you know, at a, a at a hen's party all dolled up in cowboy gear and their boots had been sitting up the top and they'd thrown one at them. I remember. Yes. I remember. So, that's sort of what you really get. You, it seems to have quietened down in the area. Now, Emery and Victor, uh, Emery, are you going to go see Granny or are you just going to the craft store? Uh, Emery would, would like to go see Granny after, you know, veering a little bit into the cafe just to see. I'm going to follow her just... To be sure you don't. She's not knowing it. <laughs> so as you both ponder into the cafe, a familiar face looks up at Emery. There's a face I haven't seen for a long while. As Alicia stares back at you, blue eyes, blonde hair, in her uniform for work. She's like, hiya. I thought maybe you'd forgotten about me. And she looks behind you and oh, never. Sees, sees Victor and her face drops a little bit. Because friend of yours? A uh, co-worker, actually. Oh. Nice to meet you. You too. Uh, were you after a, a coffee? The kitchen's almost closed for the day, but... Um... Drop a basket of fries um, if you want anything. Ooh, fries sound very good right now, actually. Yeah, we could use it. Is if it, that's not troubling you too much? Do you, I still look like heavily beaten up, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. She sort of looks at you and goes, Look, for you, it's fine. Do you need to talk to me privately? Maybe. She looks at Victor, looks back at you. Uh, no, uh, no, no. Yeah, uh, this is not his concern or issue. Uh, okay. Um, give me a moment. I, I do apologize. You'll have to have the fries to go though, because yeah. they get kind of grumpy if I keep them too late. She ducks back into the kitchen briefly, sort of shooting a, a bit of a coy glance at Emery as she heads into the kitchen. Looking at Emory. What? Huh? <laughs> what did I do again? Uh, yeah, we'll see. She comes back out in a couple of minutes with a basket, like a, with a sort of one of the box of piping hot fries 
not just nicely salt and sort of I finish in about half an hour um if you wanted to catch up but I'd been waiting for you to call but I figured you must have been busy a little bit busy I'm also more of an in-person kind of person anyways but yeah I'm just gonna kind of talk with granny for a little bit and then yeah I can uh we can have a little chat you gotta go see. Oh, good luck. Why? Um. One moment, and she ducks and under, pulls out from under the counter, um, a like a, a small bottle of whiskey. Goes, it's not tea anymore, and hands you the small bottle. That might do you a bit better. The new medication's I working it. amazing. I, I don't know where she got it from, but. Oh, I'm gonna go I'm clean up and lead you to that. And she just sort of bang May. Yep. So uh, we go see Granny. With a box of piping hot fries that's probably been handed to Victor, and a bottle of whiskey in Emery's hand, you walk out, and you would possibly run into William and Nick by this point. Right. Sure. Well, so the flea market sort of has this shape, sort of it sort of meanders. And Granny's would be last on the list if he was looking for books, because it's an antique store. Mm. Mm. Antiques, you say? Yes, antiques. I have a feeling Nick might have ended up there before the rest of them then, because he was meandering mm. looking for stuff. Okay, well, if you would like, Nick can already have been in there, and as he walked in, you walk in and there's old shelves along the walls, a few sort of wooden um, stands out the front with, you know, a few Mills and Boone and sort of just boring books that a lot of older people might be interested in, you know, three for a dollar and things like that. You sort of potter on in and there's all manner of random antiques. So there's... The ornate wooden and leather chairs. There's different bureaus and chests of drawers and dresses with amazing, gorgeous, ornate, ornate antique styled mirrors. My brain invented a new word then of ornate. I love it. Um, <laughs> but also on all these shelves are various different knickknacks. And some of them you sort of look at them and go, huh. Especially when you see, you come to the back and sort of off to the right hand side, you know those small mini funerary urns you can get that people often mm -hmm. use to separate ashes out to different family mm -hmm. members? There is a shelf of them, probably about 30 or 40 of them, just in that back corner. And. As you walk in and the buzzer goes off, you hear, won't be a moment, love, coming from out the back. Take your time, just looking. Nicholas is immediately going to go to the funerary rooms. So they asked when he got the, the counter and they're tucked just like they're on the walls just behind the counter a bit. So you can stand there and look at them, but you can't really handle them. Um... And as you get over to that corner, this little old lady, probably about five foot one, five foot two, fairly spry, a little bit chunky, but fairly spry, curl, this little mass of curly black uh, grey hair, just sort of comes around the corner and, can I help you, love? I'm just looking. Thank you, though. She sort of looks at you, looks at the urns. Curious one, interested in death, are you? More or less, something like that. Hmm. I don't think I've ever been to a, a, a flea market where there's little funerary urns for sale. It's an interesting choice. You'd be surprised how many people donate these because they don't want what's left in them anymore. Oh, so they are filled with ashes. Some are, some are, but depends on 
which one they are and which one they aren't, I suppose, really. Interesting. And she sort of gives her necklace a bit of a rub, and I'd like you to give me a wits and a cult roll, please. Okay. Does my specialty come into play? No. Okay. You said wits and a cult. Yep. Yeah, we're going to re-roll some failure. Three successes. As you look at her, you feel almost a warm tickle around the edges of your brain. You can't quite figure it out, but you do recognise the feeling to a point. And she just sort of stops, and it's like her eyes focus in on you a little bit clearer. As Emery and Victor go to walk into the store, she just continues to sort of just stare at Nicholas briefly. Curious. Well, there's a face I haven't seen in a long while. What's the matter, Hello, scared Granny. Scared I was going to bite you? No. Hmm. Alicia's been pining after you. Oh, yeah? Good to know. And I'll pull out the uh, whiskey for her. She's a good girl, that one. She reaches under the counter and pulls out a glass, pours herself a nip. This will do for now. This one belonged to you? She nods her head at Nick. Yes. Uh, uh, a new friend of ours. Has William walked around by this point, do you think? William has walked around by this point. She looks up and goes, Ah! Only three of you today? Oh, and this one, of course. Where'd you drag him in from? More like I dragged myself. We conscripted him from Virginia, apparently. I knew the world had gone to shit. I didn't know it was that bad. And she sticks her hand out towards you, and it's like her, her entire sort of mannerism shuffled. She went from being slightly guarded and watching you like a hawk, Nick, to... Okay, you with these guys. She sticks her hand out. Granny. Easiest way to remember me by. It's a pleasure to meet you, I'm Nick. And he matches her energy with the handshake. It is a strong, firm handshake. Like, it's almost... Whoa, where did this come from? I so, mean, Nick has just matched the best he can. Yeah. She goes, so, you don't do much without a reason for it. I suppose I kind of owe you what you come to pick it, uh, come to call in the favour, have we? No, not yet. Not yet? No. Well, what are you here for, then? I just came here to check. I don't know why everyone else came here. But uh, we did some shopping, and I just kind of came here to check up on you. Maybe update you on some things. See if you've got any updates for us. She reaches forward and grabs Emery's chin and tilts it up. Very much that like, you're checking up on me. Who's been checking mm -hmm. up on you? Me. <laughs> Eating fries. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, Hello, by the way. Just working out some practice, that's all. I'm fine. I hope it's not dodging practice. I don't dodge things. I can tell. So, 
This one here is interested in death and you three are back. So, <laughs> what's going on? I'm going to look around. Um, is it relatively clear? Um, there's no one else in the shop. It uh, looks like a friend of ours is back. The farmer? Oh no, he's, a relative he's, he's... of yours? And she sort of stops. One moment. And she walks out from behind the counter. Walks to the front, pulls in the two bookshelves at the book displays, and pulls the front door down. Turns the side to closed. Walks back over to the four of you and goes, What do you mean a relative of mine? Connor. I'm sorry, what? Connor? Well, he's not here. She no, starts rubbing he's... her necklace again. He's currently very attached to my sister. Yeah. <gasps> Didn't think she was his type. Oh. <laughs> So, I'm a little confused. You are taking that very well. <laughs> yeah. Considering what I did for 30 years? Yeah. We also don't know what you've done for 30 years. Like, you, you were out of it even when we helped you with all of this stuff. So. <sighs> yeah, well, look. And she's got to look at Nick and be like, you filled him in? Ish. He's catching up as he goes along. Right. He's talked to honestly... Connor. Didn't you talk to Connor? Sort of. Yeah. So you communicated with my grandson? Mm, yes. Right, so what's keeping him? Bored. I haven't really figured it out more than that. From what he said, he's bored. Assumedly, he got bored in wherever ghosts go, and he decided to come back and mess with Ella. Because apparently yeah, we're interested. We're like yeah, a he soap seems yeah. interested in Ella, but also in the activities that we do. But he also seems to be bound, possibly, by that book. Um, it was a diary. Whatever she, it was. I don't know. And she sort of picks up her glass, takes it, throws it back, like, don't tell me that silly girl was carrying it around with her all this time. I thought she just wanted to yeah. keep it and put it in a shelf. What? Yeah, she... Well, if she needs him gone, tell her to bring him back here and I'll... Do what all good grandmothers do, I suppose. actually wants him gone, I think she... I, I think she likes the company, if I'm honest. But I just wanted to inform you, since it is a relative of yours, and you were kind of, again, very loopy when we last talked. Appreciated, considering everything I'd been through. I'm slowly getting my faculties back. and mm -hmm. It's, um... Tell you what. Those assholes are on this flea market have been fleecing me for the last couple of years on the rent here. Man, they're not happy I'm thinking clear again. But anyway. Hmm. All right. yeah. I did have a question. Yes. Do you recall now the barefooted gay? I have memories. Hmm. I... I don't think I'm meant to remember a lot of that. Hold on, I'm 
going to repeat that phrase in a second. Because Chandler's face just got covered with a OneDrive look at your memories from four years ago. I, I have vague memories of that. Still fighting to get that time back. Whoever stole it from me. I know I can't find him. Even with all of my normal methods. It appears he's no longer That's... around. That's why we actually we thought it was good to, you know, leave you some time to recuperate. Appreciate it. So now here's the question. Again, you, you can't just be here to tell me Connor's back, really. Again, appreciate the knowledge. I owe you. Would you like to bring Garden Party? I'm sorry, what? Would you like to come to a spring garden party? I'm throwing a little garden party for some for some of my associates, and I just thought you might enjoy it. She sort of looks taken aback. I have a strange request, but um, I suppose. Sure. Lovely. I'll send you an invite. It's going to be in two weeks. Oh, oh okay. It's wonderful. You, you really are an odd one. Um, still. I'm going to be honest. I just came along with them. I, and I stumbled in here because I was looking at stuff. But it's a pleasure to meet you, Granny. Um. So I don't know why the others are here. I just happened to come and mosey on in here, which I guess it was intuition talking. Sure. And she looks at you sideways slightly again, focusing on you even more. Intuition. Interesting. And she sort of steps a little bit closer to him and sort of looks him up and down. Holds out her hand and just sort of gestures to your arm to see your tattoos. He holds his arm out. She just gently grabs you by the wrist and turns your arm. Fate has a way of dragging us all to places we're meant to be. Taps on the particular iconography that's more symbolic of the Morrigan. She doesn't tend to play around much, does she? Not at all. Hmm. One moment. She steps back, ducks around the back, and rustles round out the back, and an almost familiar sound to Emery gets a little bit of a flashback of, like, not quite as verbally abusive, but the rustling in the back room. And she comes back out and goes, it's like about ten sheets of very old yellow paper that appears to have just been bound with a ribbon and goes smack you might like that looking at Nick I'm sorry my, my brain did not process any of that it's about 10 pages of like older slightly yellowed aged paper with it's been bound almost with ribbon like it's been hand tied at the, at the edges with ribbon she right. smacks it down and goes you might be interested in that. How much? You were them. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And he picks it up and thumbs through it very gently. It is all handwritten. Information on the area. Information on... You can see there's one page about weak spots, or we can fail. It just seems to be spiritual or esoteric information on the local area itself. Ooh, nice. Nick is definitely going to be taking some time to study that hmm. geography. Some... But she looks at you all again and goes, but you're not here just for that, surely. A party... 
I mean, my grandson still being around is important, of course. Sure, you're, you're here to see Alicia, aren't you? Not me. Uh, in all honesty, we did have some shopping we needed to do. I did want to check up on you and see how you were doing, because it has been a while. And Alicia's here, so. It's been, it's been good to see you, actually. <laughs> May reminds us uh, in doing a good job sometimes. You're doing a job. Whether it's good or not depends on the outcome, I suppose, right? Mm. Get that. He's, quite, he's trying to peek just uh, behind uh, uh, Nicholas to see uh, the pages. Peek shoulder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not safe. Did you ever get that jacket dry cleaned, William? Properly. Well... I kind of had to throw it out. I used it to make a fire. Interesting. I did kill an ancient immortal with it, though, so that's oh, pretty God. impressive. Oh, really? Yes, we will have to catch up at, our, at the garden party. Fascinating! And she sort of looks at all of you and then looks at her watch and goes, well... I do need to start prepping to leave. Do you tell Ella to come back and visit, though, please? I'm kind of disappointed sure she's will. not here. And if my Connor's got Emery's his eye on her... a bit her, jaded that she's not the favourite. She's like... <laughs> I, I'm uh, curious as to what my Connor sees in her. Mm -hmm. But... You'll be oh, right. I know she stands up and walk, goes to walk past you guys to go and hope, or sort of lift the front gate up. She sort of, you know, does that sort of almost a grandparent sort of like the pat, but deliberately on Emery's chest, like just on the diaphragm as she walks past, like pat, pat, oh. pat. Toughen up, love. You'll be right. And keeps walking, opens up the thing. and Not to be rude, but I'm sure you have places to be. Yeah. It's a pleasure, like always. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for the information as he holds the, the little pages. It's alright. Ask your friends one day. I kind of owe them a little bit. Got a bit of extra time in this world thanks to them. And as you all walk out, it just boom and like a big bang as she closes it up, locks it up, and walks out the back and turns off the lights. So now here's the question, before we head out for the evening, does Emery go back with the boys or is she going to hang around and chat to Alicia? No, no, she's going to tell the boys to go. She'll walk home if she wants to or just get an Uber, but she's going to wait and have some time with Alicia. So you three hop in the car or get ready to hop in your vehicle. Emery gives you a bit of a nod and walks off. We'll leave the evening there. Thank you very much for watching. It'll be interesting to see what happens next week. Good night, everyone. This has been a St. Petersburg by Night production. What the Hell is That is produced in agreement with the World of Darkness and Dark Pack. The storyteller for What the Hell is That is Cole. Tonight's characters were voiced by Sam, Nabbers, John, Kingdom, and Nexus. Visit our website at stpetebynight.com for more information about all of our productions and how you can become part of our community. Thank you for listening. Until next time, fangs, steaks, and claws out. <laughs>